and welcome back and thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Uh, our housing market this year has been absolutely all over the place, which is making it very challenging to report what's actually happening right now in the US housing market. But in today's video, I'm actually gonna focus on some early indications of home buying demand to give some clues about what lies ahead with our US housing market. And with that said, of course, I have a lot to share. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, this is a report I want to share uh, to start today's video uh, from the EMBA or the Mortgage Bankers Association that was just posted on the 19th of April, which is today. Hope you guys appreciate these uh, timely housing market updates. Anyways, take a look at this. So applications overall, which of course includes refis plus purchases, actually fell 8.8% compared to the previous week. This report covers the week ended April 14th, by the way. So overall applications uh, decrease 8.8%, which is actually a little bit unusual because I have been reporting to you guys how um, applications have been increasing uh, because rates were decreasing. Um, I also have some news to share regarding rates here in just a little bit though. So the refi index uh, decreased 6% from last week and was down 57% or 56% uh, from the same week one year ago. So obviously the refi index is a tie directly to rates. When rates fall, of course, uh, refis actually increase and just the opposite when rates um, increase, of course. Uh, but we wanna gauge um, our housing market uh, or housing market demand. Um, we have to look at the purchase index, which of course is a measure of the amount of people submitting applications for home loans to buy houses because that decreased 10% from one week ago it was down 36% from the same week one year ago. And by the way, when looking at pre-pandemic levels uh, for their purchase index, we're at the lowest levels going back to January of 2015. In other words, the lowest amount of applications for home loans to buy houses going back to January of 2015 when looking at pre-pandemic levels. It appears our housing market is highly rate sensitive right now because when rates uh, increase, uh, demand tends to decrease greatly, um, which is making it very challenging to report uh, the latest uh, trends we're seeing right now. So according to Joel Kahn, who's the MBA's vice president and deputy chief economist, he had this to say, last week's increase in rates prompted a pullback in application activity. In other words, because um, rates were increasing, that caused a decrease in applications for home loans. Uh, with more first-time home buyers in the market, we continue to see increased sensitivity to rate changes. The 30-year fixed rate increased 13 basis points uh, for the week to 6.43%, which led to purchase applications decreasing by 10%. So that's what rates were like one week ago. But look at this, because rates increase five basis points today, which is um, April 19th, to 6.75% for an average 30-year fix for people with exceptional credit. A 15-year increase to 6.12, jumbo increase to 6.2%, and you can get a 30-year fix using FHA or VA at around 6.27 uh, to 6.28%. Now check this out, because on um, April 5th, approximately two weeks ago, um, average rates for 30-year fix uh, was at 6.16%. Now they have increased to 6.75% or approximately a 60 basis point increase in the last two weeks alone. So because rates have increased from about 6.16% to approximately 6.75% over the past two weeks alone, here is the current impact um, for home buyers right now. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's just say someone's looking to buy a $450,000 home, putting 5% down uh, compared to two weeks ago, compared to now. Uh, two weeks ago, again, the rate was 6.16%. Your average monthly housing payment of only principal and interest only would be $2,607 per month. Now, fast forward to today though, when rates are at 6.75%, Again, buying a $450,000 home, putting 5% down, your new housing payment would be $2,773 per month. This means your average monthly housing payment has increased by $166 more per month over the past two weeks alone. And because average rates are currently at a one month high right now at 6.75%, this is causing a housing affordability issue still in the US 
despite the fact that prices are down compared to one year ago. Joel Kahn actually touched on this as well uh, because he says affordability challenges persist and there is limited for sale inventory in many markets across the country, so buyers remain selective on when they can act. Uh, regarding his quote saying here, we have a limited for sale inventory. This more or less means we have, um, uh, historically speaking, a lack of houses for sale for existing houses. So for example, according to AltusResearch.com and Realtor.com, they're both reporting gains of around 50 to 60% more houses for sale compared to about 12 months ago. So we have far more houses for sale compared to the past two years, really. Uh, but the current levels right now compared to pre-COVID levels, we have approximately 50% fewer house for sale compared to April of 2019, for example. So we have a lot more houses for sale right now compared to the past couple of years. But having said that, we're still well below pre-pandemic levels. So for example, according to Redfin, active listings or housing supply in the US have been decreasing every single month this year, which is entirely abnormal. So here's a look at active listings according to Redfin. Um, active listings have been decreasing every single month so far this year. In fact, when we add 2022 and 2021, the current levels we have right now for inventory is actually below levels we saw back in 2021. What I mean this is entirely abnormal is that during this time frame right now, we should be seeing inventory actually increase like we saw back in 2021 and of course in 2022 as well. And this is actually a big, big problem for home buyers right now because there's not enough houses for sale. Of course, every real estate market's different, but on a national level, uh, inventory going down is putting upper pressure on home prices. So for example, based on my latest um, video I made for the California Association of Realtors that I just posted either today or yesterday, home sold prices in California have increased by about 7% compared to last month. And that, by the way, was the first time the median sold price in California has increased going back to August last year. All right, so going back to the NBA's report right here, I also want to touch on uh, their quote right here saying we have affordability challenges still. So look at this right here. Uh, this is the average monthly housing payment. If you're looking to buy a house or a median price home uh, one year ago, uh, by the way, the median sold price one year ago, according to Redfin, was $373,000. So let's assume uh, putting 5% down, uh, the, your rate one year ago or average rates one year ago were at 5.35%. So your housing payment one year ago would be $1,978 per month. Now look at now. The median sold price at $364,000, according to Redfin, that's down about 2% compared to uh, 12 months ago. Putting 5% down, your average uh, rate would be 6.75% as of today, which again is the 19th. Your new housing payment of principal and interest would be $2,242 per month. This means by my dumb math, that's an increase of $264 more per month to buy that same median price home today versus 12 months ago. I mention this because there's this common myth right now that it's actually cheaper to buy a house today compared to 12 months ago. But in fact, that is not the case because rates have increased from 5.35% from one year ago. Now they're about 6.75%. So despite the fact that prices are down 2% on a national level compared to a one year ago, your average monthly housing payment uh, has increased by about $264 more per month. All right, changing gears uh, slightly here, let's also talk about Redfin's Home Buyer Demand Index, which of course is a measure of requests for um, home tours and other home buying services by Redfin agents or for Redfin agents. Their index actually decreased by 21% compared to one year ago. So the current levels right now are below 2022, of course, and also below 2021. Also, something interesting to note here is that uh, their index, which of course measures um, uh, home buying activity or home buying demand, um, started decreasing big time starting in April last year when rates uh, increased to about 5%, if I recall. So uh, it's gonna be interesting to see, um, given the fact that rates have been above what, 6% ever since last fall, 
it's gonna be interesting to see what this index does for the remainder of the year, because last year, the index was tanking through mid-June last year. And lastly, when looking at Google searches for homes for sale, that has decreased by about 10% compared to 12 months ago. So here's a look at that. Their index right now is 83. One year ago, their index was 92. So obviously the higher the number, uh, the more home searches or the more, more searches they have for homes for sale on Google. Um, ever since uh, January 1st this year though, their index really hasn't moved very much at all. It has been more or less flat all year. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What's your biggest takeaway from today's video? Mine is that it's uh, very, very challenging to report what's actually happening right now in our US housing market, given all the volatility in rates. When rates uh, tend to decrease big time, we see some early indications that um, home buying demand is increasing greatly as well. Yet, as we saw today, uh, based on uh, the MBA's report right here, that applications fell 10% uh, when, when rates were starting to increase to above 6.5%. So I would imagine that it's gonna be a very volatile ride uh, regarding our housing market this year if we continue to see this volatility in rates this year. One thing's for certain though, is that it appears that our housing market is highly rate dependent. So it's gonna be a bumpy ride this year. But of course, I'll definitely keep you posted with the latest developments. And with that said, thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Please comment below with your biggest takeaways from today's video. And of course, I appreciate you. I appreciate you guys watching my uh, YouTube videos, of course, as well. Hope you guys have an awesome day. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.